Hey everyone, we were playing Yakuza 5 for a long time, especially with all the interruptions and whatnot, so I decided to put the next RPG up to a vote, and our winner, by not a- oop, oh, I can, I can vote, that's weird, considering I'm <laughs> the host. Anyway, the winner is Planescape Torment, by not a huge margin, but it pulled ahead by the end. So this is going to be my first ever Infinity Engine RPG, uh, ever. And my first playthrough of of uh, Planescape Torment ever, where all I really know about it is that it is seen as the direct inspiration to Disco Elysium, which I have played. Seems like just about everybody got turned into a zombie over the course of that thing. Everyone shriveled up. Very <laughs> flight or fight reaction triggered whenever when you just have a whole line of people all pointing at you like that. This is an interesting start screen. Graphic design is my passion going on up here. <laughs> Planescape. Torment. Enhanced Edition. It made sense that I figured to play the Enhanced Edition. I think there's like controversial... I think there's like the the uh, the the enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate. I think has some kind of controversy surrounding it, but I haven't heard anything about the Torment one or Icewind Dale ones. So I figure we'll just go in here. So new life is start, select life is load, resume life is continue. The abyss is quit, and alter senses is hello. The other setting is. So the, the only setting is, is is go back to not being in the in the enhanced edition, I guess. Doop -doop. Oh, oh, you continue, and then there's more settings. Gotcha. I like increased. Doop. I like larger font sizes. Oh nope. I prefer larger font sizes in text-heavy games. Like, why are we straining ourselves? It's the thing we're going to be looking at the entire game. So it, st it loads with sprite lines. Zoom lock. Grayscale on pause. Dither always. Uh, we're probably fine, honestly. Main thing was just to get that. YouTube gameplay. Difficulty? Frame rate. Is a slider? <laughs> that doesn't... Is, if I click on it, does it tell me the number? That's just weird. <laughs> it's just, it's weird to have a slider for that. I figure we'll just play with default settings, generally speaking. So the only, so the only thing I really know about this, let's start with vibes. the The impression I get of Planescape is that it's a, it's an earlier RPG that leaned especially heavy on writing. It is, it seems to frequently come up alongside Vampire the Masquerade and Fallout New Vegas as, like, the ultimate RPG. And I guess the original Deus Ex is, like, the ultimate RPGs ever of all time. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how it ages and whatnot. Because, uh, 
Vampire the Masquerade one in particular was very was an interesting example of that thing because it had it had things going for it, but it also like the combat and other elements of the game like are are rough <laughs> as far as how they've aged. But also that game is pro it's like propped up entirely by mods, and without them, it's like this weird incomplete thing. I don't think I've heard anything along those lines really about Planescape, so I, I think it, it sounds more like a completed game that didn't have to compromise heavily, but I don't actually know much about it. The only thing I've been warned about going in is that I should- I want the wisdom stat, which is a good warning to get because, a uh, little backstory, I did a Fallout 1 playthrough not too long ago, and I've, I've played so many RPGs where I do the win at conversations build where you just have a bunch of charisma or speech or whatever the given stat is for that game and So I played a low a lowish charisma character in Fallout and everyone hated me all the time and just started shooting me constantly and every conversation almost always failed so I just didn't meet most of the companions or get to do most of the storylines and entire chunks of the game just closed themselves off to me the moment I started so mod like more modern RPGs as if they make them anymore because <laughs> the entire genre is essentially dead now uh, might be a little more flexible and be like oh let's check out this playstyle see how it goes but some of the older ones you don't if you don't build your character a little bit in a certain way uh, they kind of just throw you out the window and like oh whatever have a shitty experience, I guess, bye. Uh, but it's, it's variable, right? Like, famously, that th these games also would have, like, alternate dialogue if you have low intelligence, and isn't this fun, and whatnot. But some of the options they give you are less, less fun. So here we go. We have intelligence, strength, wisdom, constitution, charisma, and dexterity. And I was told that this game is based on D&D 2nd Edition, which I have never played. Uh, I started with with uh, third edition, and I have played a lot of fifth edition. So I never have, I've never touched one, two, or four. Just played three point five, Pathfinder, and five. So intelligence is memory, deductive skills. High intelligence uh, helps you regain memories faster. Gives you more dialogue options and aids in your mage skills. Your intelligence is average. Regains memories faster. So, because you play as a guy called the Nameless One. There it is. So I'm taking I'm taking it from the intro, which reminded me of the intro to Dark Souls Two, that we do not remember who we were, and that would fit with the Nameless One part and a lot of the visual imagery that happened in that intro. So I guess that's why they they say we regain our memories faster, is we're gonna relearn who we are a bit. It's this is this itself being a thing that Disco Elysium also leaned on, the amnesia element. Not that it's a rare thing in video games. Dexterity is agility, coordination. Dexterity makes you harder to hit and, and aids in your thief skills. Strength, carry more weight, makes your melee attacks more accurate and damaging. Wisdom, intuition, common sense, and willpower. High wisdom helps you recall memories and gives you a bonus to experience points. That sounds like it's underselling how good wisdom is if I'm going off of what people have said. This ability score represents your physique, hardiness, and state of health. A high constitution gives you more hit points, and in the Nameless One's case, a faster regeneration rate as well. Your constitution is average. So this has regen, that's always nice. Persuasiveness, personal magnetism, ability to lead. The higher your charisma, the more favorably others will react towards you. So charisma is definitely always tempted, tempting. But if I'm wisdom and charisma, that definitely would make me feel like I should probably lead towards being a spellcaster and lean on to intelligence too. If I'm tempted to go in those particular directions, the ch the choices made with this interface are wild. At least it's readable. So it's a one point. It caps it at 18. So it caps it at 18, which makes sense because that's a that's a 3d6, uh, which is how that involved that's involved with stat rolling and whatnot. Notably, uh, my number of character points did not go down faster, so it's one it stays one to one. I don't uh, have to worry about 
higher stats costing more. So let's put a few points into Wisdom and a few points into Charisma real quick. I could be a thief type character. Dexterity, Charisma, Wisdom. Those, those I, I, You get to be a, a smooth talking, roguish type. That is a character I like to lean on a lot, honestly. That's kind of fun. So maybe we'll go a bit deeper into that. I've put in six points so far. I might let intelligence and strength just hang out there. But regeneration and health is useful. But how useful? We're at 16 wisdom. 12 constitution. 14 dex, 15 charisma. Is this a good setup? Do I go high, harder into, into wisdom? It does affect your uh, exp experience gain, which isn't the worst either. These are considered above average, but is above average enough? Listen, I played Disco Elysium when we only had one one point on both of my health bars, so I can't make things much worse for me than that than that did. Granted, that game had its own systems for kind of regenerating whenever you were in trouble. Let's see, armor class is ten. Definitely use people to take hits for me. Do I name him? Nope. Corpse, you're putting the blinds in the dusties. I thought you were a debtor for sure. What? Who are you? Huh? Who am I? How about you, Star? Who are you? I wasn't expecting voice acting, honestly. I asked you first, Skull. Yeah, and I'm asking you second. What's your name? I don't know. I can't remember. You can't remember your name? <laughs> well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the on the bub. Name's Mord. I'm trapped in here too. Trapped? Yeah, since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I've tried all the doors and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, we went from zero to cages real fast. Uh, we're locked in... Where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. The mortuary? Am I... What? Am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty, though. Looks like some Burke painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place the laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars. How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back, Mord pauses. Say, looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Oh, dude, what's mine say? <laughs> Whoa, what's mine say? It's stupid, stupid, stupid. No one knows that movie anymore. Everyone's 16 and doesn't remember anything before. <sighs> Whenever 16. <laughs> 2006? Yeah. Tattoos on my back. What do they say? <laughs> looks like you come looks like you come with directions. More clears his throat. Let's see. It starts with one thing. I don't know why. It's even older, stop. I know if, I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of sticks wash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is, is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. Farad can fill you in with the rest of the chant, if he is not in the dead book already. Farad? Does it say anything else? My back said all that? Yeah, there's a bit more. Mort pauses. Let's see. 
It goes on. Don't lose the journal or we'll be up to the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you. Or they'll put you in a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you, read the journal, and find Farad. Are we going like memento with this? I, mean, I gotta stop talking about things from 20 years ago. <laughs> like, is it gonna? Are we gonna find out that he wrote these instructions to himself, or did somebody else write these instructions? If they did, if I was supposed to get these instructions, why are they in my back where I can't read them? This makes me wonder if they're instructions from myself to myself, like I knew I was gonna lose my memory, or if Mort is even making stuff up because I can't read these things. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me. Was there one with me when I was lying here? No, you were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you got enough of a journal pen on your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know. But then again, I don't know many people. Still, some Burks got to know where to find Fairrod. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in the room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as, as stones, but they're harmless. and won't attack you unless you attack first. Is there some other way? I don't want to kill them just for a key. What, you think it's going to hurt their feelings? They're dead. But if you want a bright side of this, if you kill them, at least they have the, you'll, they'll have a rest before their keepers raise them up to work again. Well, alright. I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a, a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. Note, search the shelves in the room for a weapon to attack zombies with. When you find one, go to the inventory screen, the backup part, blah, 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 and arm yourself. If you wish to examine any items you find, right-click on them in the inventory screen. All right, I'll look for one. One last thing. Those corpses are, are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting the edge on you, remember you can run, and they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. No, to run, either toggle the run in the options screen, or hold down shift key. I was gonna say, toggle in the options key? That's the whole menu for that? Uh, and left click on the area you want to run to. If you're in danger of dying, use running to keep your distance from zombies while you recover. Is there a reason to walk? Maybe, because I'm a rogue. Alright, thanks for the advice. Whoa! Combat log, display the additional combat details, uh, okay. Uh, that one. Oh, that one. Quick loot. Gather, quickly gather any dropped items near the selected character. Informations. Yep. Abort. Select all. Okay. So these are where party members would be. This is a screaming skull. It's on my screen at all times. Okay. This is a lot of buttons. Pause and unpause. Did they also map it to spacebar like usual? Actions can still be yeah, cause it's so it's a it's it's pause it's pause the RPG gameplay. We're aware of this. There's a whole dedicated weapon swap button. So that's only for changing your weapons, not for uh, clicking on your weapon to attack them. As a cast, so it goes weapon, spell, item, special ability. There's a and there's a dedicated button just for talking to party members, it looks like. Which might be needed, like if you click on them you might attack them, or it might not work that way, or maybe you can just talk to them that way. Character stats... There's a lot of buttons right here. Uh, character that must be the, the statistics screen. Journal is my... alright. Open dialogue window? Oh, it lets you go back and, and look at the dialogue you've already had. Okay. And if you turn off the party member AI, then you have to manually tell them what to do. 
And the top half has even more buttons. Open oh, it loops. Get a little closer here. Which one of our voices was that? So we got little outlines to help us stand out a little bit. That's nice. And like, I guess the wobble helps a bit too. I've been curious because whenever I look at Infinity Engine game screenshots, I always worry about the just the ability to parse what's happening on the screen because it, whenever you look at screenshots of like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that, it always feels like it's hard to tell the characters apart from like the background. Oop. Okay, I need to use arrow keys or mouse, but arrow keys is nicer than that. I tried to use WASD. Bandages. Bandages hold my legs and my arms from you. Looks like someone's in the middle of dissecting this corpse. This corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. A machine at the head of the table has peeled the skin off the forehead to give direct access to the skull. That seems pretty miserable. Alright, so where's the shelf that has a, uh, a scalpel on it? The door is locked, you'll need a key. Is this where the scalpel is? Okie dokie. Uh oh. Oh. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now go get those now go get those corpses. And don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me, Mort. I will be helping you. Good good advice is hard to come by. I meant help in attacking the corpse. Me? I'm a romantic, not a soldier. I just get in the way. All right, then. Time to introduce those corpses to the second death, then. So you can also press A to start attacking, okay. Is there a quick save? Because that would be good to find out now-ish. Options. Save. New save. Yes. Options. Controls. Quit movies, sound, graphics, gameplay. Gameplay is the closest thing to controls, I guess. And there's no mention of quick saving. Uh, assign keys. Uh, spells. That does not seem promising. Maybe, maybe there wasn't quick save yet. Select weapon. Oops, not equipped yet, I guess. Select item. Inventory screen. Uh, yeah, those are weapons. Click my stabby button. All right, I think it's equipped. Now stab them with the stabby button, no? Oh, yeah, to click through their feet. That's where, like, the circle is. That is the space that they're taking. Oh, I guess I'd have selected everybody and not just him, huh? So because I have them together, they actually did both attack. Huh? Huh? That stock sound. That's not what I expect a zombie to sound like. I've, I've definitely used it. I've definitely heard other creatures sound like that in a different game. So I'm not ready for a. I'm not ready for that to be the sound of a of a zombie. Where have I heard that stock sound before? Huh. It was definitely like a beast. I'm pretty sure. We're just getting loaded with bandages right now. There's the key. The running. 
You'll need a key. Okay. So did I use a key I could have used on that, or is that a, that might be a different? That's probably a different key entirely. Won't know for a bit. Psst. Some advice, Chief. I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to push any more corpses in the dead book than necessary, especially the femmes. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. The femmes? The femmes? Why do you care about the female corpses? What? Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead shits are the last chance for a couple hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys, no lopping their limbs off, things like that. These dead shits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us? Last... last chance? What are you talking about? Chief, they're dead. We're dead. See where I'm going? Eh? Eh? I don't like this conversation at all. No. No, I, I don't actually. Chief, we already got an opening line with these limping ladies. We're, we've all died at least once. We'll have something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, alright, you might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine, sinewy cadavers I see here. Mort starts clacking his teeth as if in anticipation, and as if in as if in anticipation, Antissa. Of course, the caretakers would have have a part would have to part with them first, and that's not likely. Patient, uh, who are these caretakers again? They call themselves the Dust Men. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis of the face. They're an addled bunch of ghoulish death, death worshippers. They believe everybody should die. Sooner, better than later. I'm confused. Why do these dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the dusties believe everybody's gotta die. Sooner, better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the death book than out of it? The corpses I've seen here. Where did they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left from the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Alright, I'll... try to remember that. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little addled after your kiss with death. So I got two bits of advice for you. One, if you got questions, ask me, alright? All right, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whether you come across something that might be... Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. Let's see. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Hmm. Alright. It couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one then. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things, like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. Oh, they're telling me about an in-game journal. I wasn't entirely sure if this was a fourth wall break or not. We're like, hey, you should write stuff down in real life. And I'm like, I don't need to write stuff down. I can Google things. <laughs> uh, no, I do have a dedicated journal just for Let's Plays, but I haven't had to use it for a bit. There's a journal button. It's, it's updated automatically. Imagine. All right. I got it. Let's go. Updated my journal. I will die on the hill that Elden Ring should have had a fucking journal. Even if it was going to be like, even if it had to be a Morrowind style one where it was just kind of a feed of the conversations you've had so far and little updates about what you've encountered as opposed to an actual objective list. Just anything to let you review what was happening, even a little bit. I would have taken that over absolutely nothing. Rest party. There's a dedicated rest button. 
which is often abusable unless they straight up stop you. I'm looking for a sneak button. Spell, item, special ability. So I, I'm good at dexterity, but I don't think I can sneak. I guess if I just stay away from them, they might not attack. They seem to have very reduced attack range. I'm not loving his uh, motivation for it, though. Which is that he wants to sleep with the corpses. I don't think I can sneak past these guys. Or I can? Okay, they don't they don't have much range, do they? Yeah, they do not they do not have much of an aggro range to them apparently. That's a surprise dialogue. Oh yeah, you click here. You, chief. Right, that's what he sounded like. <laughs> My voice the voice was probably drifting rapidly while we got so far off track cuz he only said one voice, one line ever. How do I use these bandages? You, well, you, you use them. Staunch bleeding and all that. Right click on them while on the inventory screen to use them on a, is just how to use them on yourself. Or put them on a quick slot and then you can use them on other people. Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Show more. Nothing there. So the zombies are pretty slow. So far they haven't landed a hit on me. Okay, I think they, I think they just don't aggro. At all. That was pretty close to them. Receiving... Receiving room logbook. Hello. This huge logbook lists mortuary procedures in a tight crabbed script. All shells entering the mortuary are to be delivered to the receiving room and logged with the scribe on duty before being embalmed or cremated. The records are to be checked to determine if the shell is one of the contracted, and if so, do not prepare the shell. Move the shell to one of the preparation rooms, contact the scribe on duty, and notify him that a contracted shell is to be raised. Be certain that a shell is thoroughly stripped of its possessions before being sent to the preparation rooms. The contracted workers are intended for simple manual labor and do not have the capacity to search and strip a shell. The faction is not responsible for any possessions lost or items stolen by, contractor, by the collectors who have brought the shells to the mortuary. The shell's possessions are to be stored in the receiving room until an, an initiate can be sent to claim them. Please catalog all possessions in the logbook. So I need to get there to get my stuff back. Following this list is thousands of entries of bodies that have been sent to the receiving room. As you flip through the rest of the book, however, you notice the last page has been cut out. Hmm. That's where I would have found out what my name is. So we're not getting that back. If I go to the... Receiving room, I can get my stuff back. And then I'll have more than a scalpel to use. Fist irons. What is that? What is that? These barrels contain a murky liquid. It smells like a cross between vinegar and formaldehyde. Well, it would make sense to have some formaldehyde around. They are embalming. Doll. The scribe looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow, like old parchment. Charcoal gray eyes lie within an angular face, and a large white beard flows down the front of his robes like a waterfall. His breathing is ragged and irregular, but even his occasional coughing does not slow the scratching of his quill pen. Greetings. Whoa, Chief, what are you doing? I was going to speak with the scribe. He might know something about how I got here. 
Look, rattling your bone box with Dusty's should be the last thing. Before Mort can finish his rant, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spell dies down, and the scribe's breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. And we especially shouldn't be swapping the chant with sick Dusty's. Come on, let's leave. The quicker we, we give this place the, la uh, the laugh, the bet. Before Mort can finish, the scribe's gray eyes flicker to you. The weight of years hangs heavy upon ye, restless one. He places down his quill. But I do not yet count deafness among my ailments. Restless one, do you know me? Know you? I... There's a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you have known yourself. He is silent for a moment. For you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? As always, the question. And the, qu and the wrong question, as always. He bows slightly. But the movement suddenly sends him into a bout of coughing. I... He pauses for a moment. Catches his breath. I... Am Dahl. Perhaps you can answer some questions for me, Dahl. Updated my journal. Cool. <laughs> Updated my journal. Very well. What do you wish to know? What is this place? You are in the mortuary, restless one. Again you have come. Before he can finish, Dahl breaks into a fit of coughing. After a moment he calms himself and his breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. This is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadow of this life. Shadow of this life? Yes, a shadow. You see, restless one, this life, it is not real. Your life, my life. They are shadows, flickerings of what life once was. This life is where we end up, after we die. And here we remain, trapped, caged, until we can achieve the true death. What makes you think this life isn't real? What makes you think this life is real? Look inside yourself. Do you not feel something lacking? Dahl shakes his head. <clears throat> this is a purgatory. There is only sorrow here. Misery. Torment. Planescape torment. These are not the elements that make up life. They are part of the cage that traps us in this shadow. I think your fatalism has gotten the better of you. Those elements are part of life, but not the whole of it. Dahl shakes his head. Passions carry weight. They anchor many to this shadow of life. As long as one clings to emotion, they will be continually reborn into this life. Forever suffering, never knowing the purity of true death. I see. How does one escape the cycle of rebirth and achieve this true death? Kill your passions. Strip yourself of the need for sensation. When you are truly cleansed, then the cycle of rebirth will end, and you will achieve peace. Dahl sighs. It sounds like a death rattle in his throat. Past these shells of ours, past the eternal boundary, lies the peace that all souls seek. The eternal boundary? The boundary between the shadow of this life and the true death. True death? True death 
is non-existence, a state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion. Dahl coughs, then gives a ragged breath. A state of purity. Sounds like oblivion. Why would anyone want that? Is it worse than remaining in this shadow of what life once was? I think not. I feel like I would disagree. I see. I had some other questions. How did I get here? Dahl snorts in contempt, as if he finds the memory repugnant. Your moldy chariot ferried you to the mortuary, restless one. You would think you were royalty based on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon that cart that carried you. I arrived here on a cart? Updated my journal. Yes. Your body was somewhere in the middle of the heap, sharing its fluids with the rest of the mountain of corpses. Dahl breaks into another violent fit of coughing, finally catching his breath minutes later. Your seneschal, Farad, was, as always, pleased to accept a few moldy coppers to dump the lot of you at the mortuary gate. Who is this Farad? He is a collector of the dead. Dahl draws a ragged breath, then continues. We have such people in our city that scavenge the bodies of those who have walked the path of true death and bring them to us so that they might be interred properly. Where can I find this, Farod? If events persist... As they have, Restless One, you have a much greater chance of Farod finding you and bringing you to us again before you find whatever ooze puddle he wallows in this time. Nevertheless, I must find him. A slight warning creeps into Dahl's tone. Do not seek Farod, Restless One. I am certain that it will simply come full circle again. With you, none the wiser, and Farad a few coppers richer. Accept death, restless one. Do not perpetuate your, si your circle of misery. I have to find him. Do you know where he is? Updated my journal. Dahl is silent for a moment. When he finally speaks, he seems to do so reluctantly. I do not know under which gutter stone Farod lairs at the moment, but I imagine that he can be found somewhere beyond the mortuary gates, in the hive. Perhaps somewhere, perhaps someone there will know where you can find him. It doesn't sound like you like Farod much. There are some I respect, Restless One. Dahl takes a ragged breath and steadies himself. Farod? Is not one of those is not one of them. He wears his ill repute like a badge of honor and takes liberties with the possessions of the dead. He is a knight of the post, cross trading filth of the lowest sort. Knight of the post? A knight of the post Dahl coughs. A thief. All Farad brings to our walls comes stripped of a little less of their dignity than they possessed in life. Farad takes whatever he may pry from their stiffening fingers. So that's where my journal is. Did this Farad take anything from me? Dahl pauses, considering. Most likely. Are you missing anything? Especially anything of value? His voice dips as he frowns. Not that Farod would take exception to anything that wasn't physically grafted to your body, and sometimes even that's not enough to give his greedy mind pause. I am missing a journal. A journal? If it was of any value, then it is, li it is likely it lies in Farod's hands. Can you tell me how to get out of... How, yeah, I already asked that one. 
Can you tell me how to get out of here? Hmm. The front gate is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone other than the dustbin pass. Dahl breaks into a ragged cough, then continues. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it. But it is unlikely he will open it for you unless you are extremely persuasive. I might just be that. Do you know who I am? Updated my journal. I know scant little of you, restless one. I know little more of those that have journeyed with you, and who now lie in our keeping. Dahl sighs. I ask that you no longer ask others to join you, restless one. Where you walk, so walks misery. Let your burden be your own. So I have party members essentially from a previous journey and they're all here and dead. Maybe several times over. Seems like it. Seems like I just keep dying and coming back here. There are others who have journeyed with me. And they are here. Updated my journal. Do you not know the woman's corpse interred in the memorial hall below? I had thought that she had traveled with you in the past. Dahl looks like he is about to start coughing again, then catches his breath. Am I mistaken? Where is her body? The Northwest Memorial Hall on the floor below us. Check the beers there. Her name should be on one of the memorial plaques. Mayhap that will revive your memory. I don't know. I don't recall ever traveling with a woman. Dahl makes no response to this. He simply stares at you in silence. Before, you said there were... There were others interred here who journeyed with me. Where are they? Doubtless there are, but I know not their names, nor where they lie. One such as you has left a path many have walked, and few have survived. Dahl gestures around you. All dead come here. Some must have traveled with you once. I find no fault in your reasoning. I had some other questions. What do you do here? I am a scribe, a cataloger of all the shells that have come to the mortuary. Dahl coughs again, then takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows through the mortuary, I shall remain at my post. Tell me more about the mortuary. I don't remember if I asked this exact question already. Yeah, this seems new, actually. I thought, I thought I'd already asked this one. This is where the death are brought to be interred or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead, those who have left this shadow of life and walk the, tr the path of true death. Dahl's voice drops in concern. Your wounds must have exacted a heavy toll if you do not recognize this place. It is almost your home. Dustmen. We dustmen are a faction, a gathering of those of us that recognize the illusion of this life. We await the next life, and others, and help others on their journey. Perhaps you can explain why the dustmen want me dead. Dahl sighs. It is said there are souls who can never attain the true death. Death has forsaken them, and their names shall never be penned in the dead book. To awake from death as you have done suggests you are one of these souls. Your existence is unacceptable to our faction. Unacceptable? That doesn't sound like it leaves me in a good position. You must understand. Your existence is a blasphemy to them. Many of our faction would order you cremated if they were aware of your affliction. You're a dust man, but you don't seem to be in favor of killing me. Why not? Because forcing our beliefs upon you is not just. You must give up this shadow of life on your own. 
Not because we force you to. Dahl looks about to break. Dahl looks about to break into another coughing jag, but he manages to hold it in with some effort. As long as I remain at my post, I will protect your right to search for your own truth. What is your post? I think that we already know this. These are all, you know, I'm just kind of, kind of cycling through because we're looping a little bit. Some of the trees feed back into each other. You sound ill, are you not well? I am close now to the true death, restless one. It will not be long before I pass beyond the eternal boundary and find the peace I have been seeking. I tire of this mortal sphere. Dahl gives a ragged sigh. The plains hold no more wonders for one such as I. Are you certain? There might be some way I could help you. I do not wish to live forever, nor live again, restless one. I could not bear it. Very well. Farewell, Dahl. As you turn to leave, Dahl speaks. Know this, I do not envy you, restless one, to, re to be reborn as you would be. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I could not bear. You must come to terms with it. At some point your path will return you here. Dahl coughs, the sound rattling in his throat. It is the way of all things, flesh and bone. Then perhaps we will meet again, Dahl. Not the worst time to save. Uh, okay, you can double double click to make it saves a bit of time. Rest, mage, map, inventory, b b journal. There we go. Find my missing journal, which Farad seems to have. So the bottom is the newest stuff. One of the women who journeyed with me is interred in the memorial hall on the first floor of the mortuary. I thought he gave me more specific directions than that. Oh, gotta find it. The gate looks sealed shut. There's no lock or other means of opening it. Is this down here a dead end? Right, let's run. Save me some time. It's a cool environment. Atmospherically, it's nice. I wish the game was a little more remastered than it is. Just because this, like, the art direction's neat, but it's very clearly a super low resolution. And for an enhanced edition, you'd kind of hope that it, they might have, like, bumped it up to, like, Pillars of Eternity level visuals. But I'm sure that's a huge project, like, akin to just making a game from scratch. And so it's probably a bit much. But I'd like to, I would like to see... You know, like a higher detailed nameless one running around. That'd be neat. But that's a lot of work because it's all individual sprites. You have to draw an individual sprite facing every individual direction because they're not 3D models. Maybe making him a 3D model and just animating him like a 2D sprite would save the re on resources there a bit since it's easy to do that. It's, it's probably easier to do that technology-wise than it was back then. I think Pillars of Eternity's character's models might be 3D. I don't remember. That playthrough was a while ago. That was the first playthrough I did when I switched the uh, RPG slot to being uh, an hour long because of how long RPGs are. Then I'm like, these need to happen twice as fast, please. Does, does right shift work also? Okay, because right shift is next to the arrow key, so that's better. Can't go this way. It, it, they do look closed. But where is the floor transition?
Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the process of trying to remake this game involved would involve making it in 3D in a way in an effort to mimic the isometric 2D that might be easier than making all these sprites. Because you can trick it. Granted, they also might be doing that trick where the, uh... These might just be, like, essentially, like, screenshots of 3D models. That's what they, what they did sometimes with, like, stuff like Donkey Kong. So it might have it might already been like that. It might have already been like that, and that also would be potentially how you could do that anyway. But for an enhanced edition, it seems more akin to, like, they made it... They made sure that it runs on modern tech, more so than anything else. Iveen. You see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck make her appear as if she is starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with a finger. Greetings. The woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are talons. They are darting in and out of the corpse's chest cavity like knives, removing organs. I said, greetings. The woman makes no response. I think the dusty chit might be a bit short of hearing, chief. Let's lay off, shall we? What's wrong with her hands? Updated my journal. Eh. She's a tiefling, Chief. They got fiend blood in their veins. Usually cause, cause some ancestor of theirs shared knickers with, the one, with one demon or other. Makes some of them addled in the head. And addled looking, too. I used to have a tiefling character, but that campaign fell apart. And then got turned into thunder in the morning. The, the, uh, tabaxi. That was just the same character, but new species. Tap the woman to get her attention. The woman jumps and whips around to face you. Her eyes are rotting yellow, with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees your expression changes from surprise to irritation. And she frowns at you. <clears throat> uh, greetings. She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward, squinting, as if she can't quite make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly nearsighted. You. She clacks her taloned fingers together, then makes a strange motion with her hands. Find thread and M balming juice. Bring here to Iveen. Go, go, go. You've been assigned a quest. <laughs> Get embalming fluid and thread. Okay. I have some questions first. My journal. She turns away. She makes no sign that she heard you. We already asked about the hands before. Alright. I've been given a quest. How exciting. Oh, this is a lot of separate things. I probably didn't check all of these yet. Not sure where I would get these resources. There must be some about the mortuary. So they think they were just commanding a zombie around, but it might be useful in some way to do this. I have no idea. We're still looking for this other woman, though. 
on the other floor. Which I don't think I've had a lot of options for how to get around yet, so it must be forward somewhere, right? But I'll try to remember it and double back if I don't find it. But anyway, this is Planescape Torment. I think we're in for the long haul here. I doubt it's a short game. Although I think on average older RPGs were a bit shorter than I, than I might be a little used to. But I do not need things to be long anyway. Oop, there we go. No need to overstay your welcome. Alright, well it's two of that and none of the thread, but we'll find it. We'll find it. Mm -hmm.